Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Madness here. Welcome to another episode of the Indie Heads podcast. My name is AJ and I will be the host this evening for my very, very first time so we can we can lose our virginities together here. And uh, on tonight's podcast, we've got... Uh, Matty, uh, Recon AG. And you have Will, user Will for Thrill. Now, now Matty, you're usually the host of these things. What's going on, my man? Are you done? Are you dropping out? Are you quitting on us? Are you leaving? Are you breaking up with me? Uh, no to all those questions. I am sick right now, so I don't think I can be a good host tonight. So I'm giving the duties okay. to you for this uh, for this podcast and this podcast. Maddie, only. Maddie is sick tonight. And speaking of sick, we've got a new track from the Avalanches. The oh, first wow. one in 16 just go, years. Just, just going straight into it. All right. Just going straight into it. I've Let's been waiting so long to talk about this. <laughs> they announced their new album, Wildflower, uh, last week. It's coming out July 8th. It's got 21 songs with features lots and lots of features that's right it's the first time the avalanches are having features on their songs what did you guys think of uh this song and what do you guys think about the album all right i i guess i'll start off so i think it's actually kind of funny because this this the song literally came out like hours after we recorded the last podcast oh well yeah remember if anyone listened to the last one i was just going off and off and off about how the only thing that mattered was the new avalanche <laughs> song and then the new avalanches album i just couldn't stop talking about it and right. then like it happened. We had less it's, than an hour. Yeah, it's like it's happening, and it, and the new song. Um, I like it. I think some people are overreacting a little bit. Like, here's the thing: it is a good song. It's not a great song. It is a very good song. And you know what? That's okay. That's all I wanted. I just want a good song, mm-hmm. and that's what I got. I got a nice Danny Brown feature. People... Got a nice Doom feature. Got some nice production. It'll probably sound better in the context of the album. That's how all Avalanches. Again, that's 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 the Avalanches. That's their signature thing. Is that they have these really cohesive albums. Or this really cohesive yeah, album. <laughs> it's really cohesive yeah, and they're album. really unpredictable. Yeah. So I think this track is good. It'll probably sound better in the context of the album. I imagine the rest of the tracks are going to sound awesome. I mean, I think they played a new song at Primavera that was like... I didn't listen it was, to it, uh, but people were praising the hell out of it. There's, there were snippets of it in that first trailer. It's called Subways, and it's the one that you could hear if you called the hotline. And it's like it sounds way more like typical avalanches. Like mm-hmm. It sounds like what people expected. Um but it's kind of floating around there. If you watch the trailer, it's like the last five or ten seconds are the song. It's All called right. Subways. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, I really like this track. I like it like it a lot, actually. I think the people who are saying, like, oh, we waited 16 years for this, like, that's the wrong attitude to take. If you say that, you could have said that about whatever they dropped. And people are freaking yeah, out like about we the wait, features. We waited 16 years for this masterpiece. Yeah, okay. Whatever they were going to put. Like, too in 1965. Yeah. Um. I mean... Um, people are overreacting about the features, but I feel like this is sort of the frontier psychiatrist of the album. That's what it'll end up being. And then people are like freaking out looking at the track list too. They're like, they have all of these artist guests, but like if you listen to the interview, they said that they got Father John Misty and he's just doing vocal harmonies like on backing one of the tracks that closes out the album. And it's like, they know what they're doing. They're not like, they're clearly not. And um, they're not going to like waste they're not going to waste their music on like whatever people are freaking out about. Like they've got features. They're just getting like, they're cashing in on the, you know, all the big indie scene and like, they're just cashing in on their name. They're making like low effort shit. They clearly put a lot of, they put 16 years of thought into it. So I think it matters. And like, and also they're changing up their style. Like, wouldn't you want that? Like, I don't want the, here's the thing from the album. Yeah. It's like, I know it's been 16 years, but I don't want the same old shit. Like I want them to do something different. And the sound from what Absolutely. it seems like is going to be something different. And I'm can get down with this and I'm fine with that. A band should evolve this over time. Really- Especially over the 16 thing I really years, like, you know? Jesus Christ. Yeah, for sure. The thing I really like about the track is that, like, people were freaking out, too, about how um, Danny Brown and Doom's vocals are, like, mixed really low. But I feel like that's kind of the point in that you really shouldn't be, like, focused on what they're saying. That Like, I know they're rappers and they're doing verses and stuff, but you really aren't supposed to be focusing on what they're saying that much. Like, that's why they got Danny Brown and Doom, I feel like, because they have such distinct voices that their voices just like become instruments on the track because like that's the kind of music the avalanches have been making and they're like look at all these unique sounds we can get and put together and like danny brown and doom's voice are very clearly part of that aesthetic where they're like we're just getting all the weirdest sounds we can make and like the beat in the background sounds like i think one of the first comments i saw on reddit was like this sounds like clown music from hell and like that's not a good sell for anything but it fits completely perfectly see i said clown music when it came out that's why i said like this sounds like clown music but it's actually kind of lit so it's Ah. it's lit i'll say and the video's great oh yeah uh but i mean i'm excited again it's coming out in less than a month too which is like oh shit what up yep i'm definitely which is like what I had hoped. I think I even said on the last podcast, I feel like it's going to be a Radiohead rollout where they're like, here's a single album's coming. Like you'll have the album in less than, I think I said like two weeks, but a month's fine. I can live with a month. 
Um, very excited. So, Will, you don't like the avalanches. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't dislike them, but just their like their DJ set style never really meshes with me. And yeah. this is just another avalanche song. I mean, my, I think that, I think this album will be good, not as good as since I left you. But I think fans will be satisfied. But I don't anticipate to turn me. But if it does, I'm all about it. Yeah, this is a good. This is a good. Like, here's what you're getting. Track like, you should know what to expect from the album. Like, I feel like I feel like everyone's expectations have been realistically tampered with this as a single. So I feel like that's good. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that's something else I want to talk about though. Just like some of things, like I think just recently it feels like the past couple of years there's been a lot of long hiatuses ending. Like in 2013 we finally got My Bloody Valentine, and then last yeah. year we finally got Dr. Dre, and now we're finally getting Avalanches. It's all Neutral Milk Hotel next year. Boy, we'll see about that. I think Violet Femmes recently reunited. I remember that. Um, yeah, that's yeah, definitely not, on tour. That's definitely not the. That's not the same. Yeah, yeah. I'm, they, just, I'm just, I'm just mentioning that, bands. I'm just mentioning like alternative indie bands that like reunited. I feel yeah. like with the, we got we got Dre and we got the Avalanches. I feel like the only next. I mean, like Radiohead kind of counts, but not really. LCD yeah, kind of counts. Five, five, five years is not. Yeah, if we're, if we're talking like, like they have been gone for, for a long, long time. Yeah, no, but, the, the only the, the next logical step, like the next logical step in exciting um, new material is Neutral Milk Hotel. That's all I'm saying. Like, yeah, yeah. I agree with that. I, 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 I'm interested to see because yeah, they said but, that this was like, like when they when they stopped touring in like 2015. Was it 2015 when they stopped touring? Like when they. Yeah, I think they said this is the last time you'll probably be like, this is the last time we're doing anything in a while. Which is like. Is it the last time, or are they like going to be working on new music? Like, who knows? Yeah, I remember. I remember another band. I who's... don't. I don't think they're going to release new music. I don't either. I was kind of kidding. Yeah, I, I, I think. think, I, think I, also, I think it's one of the biggest like Jeff indie Mangum rock tragedies. Just... I would say is that we never got new Neutral Milk Hotel because it's like Jeff Mangum is I, such I, a talented I, songwriter. I kind of Ferris Wheel on Fire was good. Wait, well, I think One on Fire. I mean, like Ferris Wheel on Fire. It's an EP that they released in like 2010. Was it like unreleased material here? Yeah, it was unreleased. Yeah. Okay. No, but for it me, like, good. in the airplane of the seas, like, the one of the few, if not the only, artistic statement I've ever, like, ha- read or heard, or watched, whatever, that, like, doesn't feel, it's that, like, yes, he said everything he has to say, Jeff Mangum. Yeah. That makes sense. Like, I feel like there's, like, nothing he could say, like, after that. Like, he just put everything <sighs> on the line. That, okay, okay, you, you're completely right, but at the same time, though, it's just, like, I mean, I would. Oh, I, I do. I want. I mean, I, it just it just sucks that like it, it'd be. A, it's a great way to go out, but at the same time, though, it's like, God, I wish there was more though, because he was so ta- he's so good, he's so talented. Yeah. It's just like I feel like if he, if, he, if he made if he made something new and it was written recently, I feel like it wouldn't be very good because he's kind yeah. of like very on like Neil Young on the nose kind of <laughs> type music we would get. Yeah. Uh. No, the real track of 1998 though is Lauren Hill. I mean, that's a tragedy that I'm actually more. Oh. Yeah, Lauren Hill's like. A, a good thing one. She's, she's like she's like a five like baseball about five star athletes you know that have every single skill. She, yeah. she's that one. Like every time I listen to her sing, I feel like I'm a record producer. Like we gotta sign her. Yeah. Oh like, man. Tiny record producer. <laughs> All right. Um, we've got some other singles to talk about too. Angel Olsen and Beck both have new songs with albums out this fall. Uh, you guys like these songs? Either of these songs? Okay, so intro. Sure. This is this is my first real introduction to Angel Wilson. I think I've listened to some songs by her, but I don't remember them that oh, often. Oh, fire! No, this was. Really I actually, I, have, I was going to listen to it uh, today on my way to uh, my work orientation, but I think I like listened we, to, um, I listened to Zena Rubio's, which I'll talk about a bit later. But I listened to this new single, and it's fucking incredible. I am. It's really good. Yeah. I it's like holy shit! I gotta listen to Angel Wilson. Like why I've been sleeping on her because I know like Congleton produced her last album. So it's like why? Yeah, I White Fire, uh, her 2014 album, uh, Burn Your Fire for No Witness. White Fire was like one of my favorite songs of the year. It's like just got this mood that like no other song. Like I, I've looked for other songs that capture the mood of White Fire, and like there's nothing out there. It was definitely one of my favorite songs uh, of that year, and the album's pretty good too. But the new single is really short, which kind of bummed me out. But I mean, it's a nice it's little gonna teaser. Be good, Oh yeah, it's, it's really. Yeah. I mean, for being so short, it's, it's it's extremely powerful. Like her voice is just incredible in the song, and the way the effects and the synth is done mm-hmm. really tastefully too. Which I don't know too much, but I know enough to know that okay, synthesizers are not her norm. Like usually, it's guitars. So it's interesting. Yeah. So again, I think one of my biggest like one of my things I don't really like bands doing nowadays is the introduction of the synthesizers, where it's really uninspired. I think we we didn't put it on the news, but Oakle Natives dropped a new track, and that's all I kept hearing about it was that it was like. 
oh great they're just using synths now and it sounds really uninspired instead of like the great guitar i still haven't as opposed to uninspired with guitars like where are they expecting with local natives oh shut up will jesus christ (laughs) i haven't listened to that song yet so we won't talk about it yeah but But, um but you know also the new beck song oh okay this new beck song i like the beck song i don't like it too i don't know what to think about it i think it's really interesting um my first my first reaction is that it sounds like it should be a lonely island song but then like like when it came on i was like oh what the fuck is this but then like 30 seconds maybe a minute in i was like okay okay fine it's (laughs) if that's the direction beck wants to go i'll listen to the album for sure i mean at, at least he's not making another what was it called uh morning phase or whatever like the album was fine but it was boring and very very clean and like that's not what we want from beck i feel like this album might have another like loser on it you know what i mean it's not this it's not wow is the new single but like he's gonna go back to that really really weird style that people really like he's been doing a lot of like acoustic alt country ish stuff for a while and i feel like he's gonna go back to this like weird rap rock pop kind of thing which honestly i i honestly think this is on here I also think this track. Hold on. What, what, what do you want to say, Will? Because I I have a theory about the song. A theory. I have a theory. I mean, I, I, this is what I mean. They just said. I mean, like Beck is basically the new Bowie now that Bowie's gone. A, yeah, a that's, that's kind of fair. <laughs> I mean, that's, 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 okay. okay. Obviously, obviously, no. I, I think I, I I get what you're. I know why you're saying that, but I still think it's a stretch. Like, yes, uh, it, it's a stretch, but no one's Bowie. But like, it's he's Bowie's, and like he can just do whatever he wants, and he'll probably do it well. And I'm just gonna let him do it. Yeah, you're right on that. But it's, it's like, it's, but, it's yeah. a song silly and weird. But that's what Beck does is silly and weird. Yeah, and definitely. Fuck- okay, can can I say my theory though, I real quick? Okay, I want to hear it. Actually, I, legit- yeah. I legitimately think this. Okay, I feel like this song is like a reaction to the current alternative scene. Like we're talking like Twenty One Pilots and shit. Like, I think it's a reaction that's to that. Seeing, kind of... seeing how Rap Rock is, like, starting to make somewhat of a comeback a little bit. That's a thing Beck would do. Like, that is abs- – I agree. That's absolutely the thing Beck would do. would be like, oh, you guys think you can do this? Uh, here's how it's done, fuckers. Yeah, and, it, and I actually like that. I mean, the song – I don't know if I like it, but I think it's really fucking interesting. It's way more interesting than whatever the fuck 21 Pilots are doing right now. 21 Pilots are fucking boring. Roasted. They Roasted. Have this horrible, boring, like, mix of, like, pop and reggae – and hip hop, it just like, it's it's a cultural, uh, it's what's what's the term I'm thinking of cultural uh, appropriation. It's like a cultural appropriation blender, except no one is really like, it's it's so weird that we go after like Iggy Azalea and shit, but like, why are we not going after Twenty One Pilots? If anything, they're now as Twenty One Pilots is as like bad as Iggy Azalea, but uh, like but it's it's like it's they're, it's thinking, up they're there. picking up where Eminem. I don't. I I I kind of disagree with you. I mean, the only thing that really. Thing Eminem is, wasn't like trying as hard to sound like Eminem, Eminem didn't sound, okay when Eminem rapped at least back in the day now he sounds kind of unnatural but Toronto Pilots when they do the style they don't sound natural it sounds very unnatural mm, I'll, I'll talk about this. it I think like the, you listen I to think... Tyler Joseph you, you, when he gets into like actual like more alternative stuff he sounds fine he has a good voice sounds just fine he's a good singer but like when he tries yeah, to do this weird reggae and rap stuff it just does not he doesn't it doesn't sound natural it doesn't fit I, I think the difference is that, like, the groundwork has kind of been laid for... I think, like, 21 Pilots feel like a natural progression. We've had white guys entering r- rap and even reggae, like, for years. And you're, like, guys from the Midwest doing, like, here's my... Here's, like, my rap album. Here's, like, my reggae album. Like, the groundwork has been laid. Iggy Azalea is getting a lot of shit because it's, like, holy shit, here's this... What is she, like, New Ze- woman from New Zealand who just, like, completely drops her accent and tries, like, actively tries to sound black. And, like, this has not happened before and we do not like this. I feel like 21 Pots are given a pass because it's, like, oh, they're just another one one of those like they're Midwest not trying to sound like, black at all no they're not trying no to sound that's what i'm saying the, the groundwork no, is only, been... for all the shit you give them the only problem i have with them is just how they play themselves as the underdog and the loser yeah that's the, the, that's my that's, problem with it like I the, that's, that's, that's definitely like, the worst obviously. part you're selling tickets for a uh, stadium tour next february yeah already. i think their music their music like, is like the... so you're not the underdogs anymore so shut the fuck up oh we're making the real progression of new metal like it's definitely the natural progression of like early see, 2000s new metal. Okay, see, this is the theory that I've been having for, like, for year, well, at least for a year now, that, that they are the natural progression of new metal. They are, like, they, a, abs- they are a marketable ICP. Death, Death Grips and 21 Pilots. No, they're, they're not ICP. The Death no, Grips Death, is ICP. Listen, Death Grips and 21 Pilots are opposite sides of the same coin in that they're natural progressions of 2000s new metal. Death Grips just took it to the weird esoteric part, and 21 Pilots took it to the commercial 
stadium rock side and there's they're basically leaving no middle ground because any other group that comes out is going to be like oh they sound like a cheap ripoff of either death grips or 21 pilots i feel like that's I kind know. of where we're at because like there's this band that we play uh, maybe because there's this band maybe. we play on on my on my college station which by the way if you guys don't know i work at my college radio station it's an alternative station and uh alternative right now is fucking terrible it's just it's maybe not terrible it's just completely bland and boring there's nothing interesting going on in the scene there's this band called New Beat Fun. They're absolutely terrible. Um, if you want to get an idea of how terrible they are, they did a they did a cover of Ray Shermer's No Type, and it is possibly the most head ass song I have ever heard in my entire head life. Ass. It's bad. It's really bad. Have you heard it? <laughs> yeah, you sent it. I remember oh. you posted it in the group one day, and you were like, "This is what I had to deal with today." And we're like, "Jesus, dude!" Just that's it's a, a bummer. A complete, okay, by the way, Sherm Life Two coming out this month. Rap album here hyped. on the way. Uh, yeah, but hyped. just a complete. Just oh god, I re- I really I recommend listening to this song because I want you to know how bad it is. I, I I can't really put into words how bad that song is. It's like okay, so New Beat Fun they basically are like they have this sort of weird like alternative rock and reggae mix, kind of similar to Twenty One Pilots. Although Twenty One Pilots it's just bad. Twenty One Pilots they have like a nice they have they they had a pop and they had enough. It's a bit, it's a bit more cleaner and a bit more like I, I as much as I shit on Twenty One Pilots, they sound a lot better than New Beat Fun. You know they at least like have pop. Like they set, they have good pop courses and they have good singing. It'd be fun. It's just it's just plain out unenjoyable. Like you know, you remember that song "Rude" by Magic? Yeah, it's, it's like they're trying to remake that. Essentially, it's it's what it is. Essentially, that's that's it's, that's the type of band. It's just like a rude ripoff or a Magic ripoff. It's, it's terrible. It's a serious bummer. It's terrible, and we keep playing yeah. them on the station, and I want to like shoot myself in the head every single time they play. Um, okay. <laughs> and uh, speaking of uh, really sad things. Um, I was going to say, we went down a really weird rabbit hole and we need to get out there. Um, yeah. yeah, Phil Elverum's wife was – this like this news broke I think right after we stopped recording last week too. We talked about it immediately and we're like, damn, that's a bummer. But Phil Elverum's wife was diagnosed with stage 4 cancer and they launched – was it Kickstarter or GoFundMe? GoFundMe. I'm on the page um, right now. GoFundMe. Yeah, they launched a GoFundMe account and it got funded really quickly and like they're way over their goal and it's just really nice to see uh, people are helping out because we talked about the guy from Surfer Blood last week, which was really unfortunate and then this story broke too and it's another really unfortunate story, but people are helping out and I think that like name your band thing was probably part of, like people gave him a bunch of shit, they were like, oh that's kind of a dumb like cash in way, but I feel like he probably knew at this point and like this is what that was going for, so that's cool too. And I'm actually I'm on, uh, on the GoFundMe page right now. He posted an update like two days ago. Uh, I'll just read it off real quick. It's pretty short. Uh, this feels like a strange dream. The response from everyone has been has vastly exceeded our expectations, and the past two days have been very floaty. We've been trying to pretend they're just normal days. Genevieve, uh, which is his wife's name, has been drawing in her studio. Our daughter chases the cat around the yard. I chase the daughter around the yard while constantly resisting the urge to go hit the refresh button on our browser to see that insane money or that insane dollar sign number climb. Thank you, everyone, for the incredible generosity and words and thoughts and love. A weight is being lifted. So that is really, really nice. You know, it's like yeah, I don't, a, I don't listen to Phil Elverum. I probably should listen to like the Globe Part Two because I think Jake is our resident uh, Mount Erie microphone stan. So I should probably listen to Globe Part Two just for for our, for our boy Jake before we go to Pitchfork together. So Throw him, he's giving me a ride. Thank God. Mm-hmm. But yeah, geez, but again, it's just it, it's awesome to see that stuff like this happen where it's like just the community the indie community is just you know uh, we we get some shit can sometimes be good some, can be we good get some sometimes. shit sometimes but like for the most part like at least for indie heads at least it's, there's some mean people that pop up every once in a while but almost everyone on there is like really incredibly nice and i don't really have many bad things to say about people on indie heads it's mainly just like maybe sometimes they're too nice and it's like yeah it's like cringy it's like y'all are too nice yeah. can you be a little it's, like it's like classic reddit that's classic reddit though like sh- just shut up yeah, <laughs> where it's like, hey guys, okay, we, uh, shouldn't, we shouldn't diss indie heads because cool. we're literally the indie heads podcast. We're, 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 we like you guys. We're, we're, we're we the, like you guys. We're the assholes of the like Okay, we have to we have to restore balance to the force. Okay, that's why we're here. That's shit. That's shit. Um, speaking of restoring balance to the force, uh, Star Wars is really good. Other things that are also really good. Kanye West, oh, except God. he didn't perform it. Boy. Oh, that was, that was really Christ. awful. <laughs> Uh, go okay, ball. Man, maybe I should have just hosted for you. Maybe I got just... rained out. I'll okay, hit it. Go okay, you, you... rained out on Sunday. Except it didn't actually like. Re- they were like, "Oh, it looks like it's gonna," or like we heard it's gonna there's rain. A, there's a cloud. We'll just we'll just preemptively cancel all of the Sunday shows for Gov Ball, which like really really sucks. I hope nothing like this ever happens to me because that like that we almost went to Gov Ball and like that would have been a huge fucking bummer. Sunday got canceled like Death Cab for Cutie and Kanye. 
both didn't perform, but Kanye was going to perform at 2 a.m. at Webster Hall, just like thrown together. They just announced it like via Twitter and like two chains of Snapchat. And then it just like turned into a riot in the streets and it was all like blocked off. The police like couldn't get a hold of anybody. Kanye didn't even perform. I think he drove down the street and like fans like I... were chanting his songs, but like he didn't perform. Say, Jesus, Jesus. Yeah, it was very strange. I think they and just, performed like, really... power at some point. They were singing power. I remember reading they, like the fans line. sang power. Yeah. Which I don't know. Is, it's a shit show. Uh, I mean, here's the thing. It, 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 I mean, this just goes to show how like how like big Kanye West is. Kanye West can literally shut down New York City. Like that's how like yeah. big and influential he is. He <laughs> can literally shut down like a massive he emoji. City. Just shut down the App Store. Oh too. Geez. Uh, oh my really god. Just power power sure can we can we talk about how fast is the worst Kanye West song ever? I think we've talked why about it before, but I think we, think we, think we can just mention that again. Thing, I, not the Charlie D version. Not the Charlie D version. I would agree with you. Yeah, no, the original version, yes. The album version, no. Yes, that's what I'm trying to say. The album Maddie, version. Why don't you just get into it? Because I see that you have uh, listened to something recently that oh. would fit this mold. Oh yeah, speaking of Kanye West, so we're gonna get to what we've been listening to this week. Well, do you want to say anything before I go into? You want to talk about Kanye? I mean, I feel like it was just a shit show. There's not. He's a good man. Kanye's a good man. Uh, it was a shitty. They just like we'll block off a street in New York. Team whatever. Kanye Daily was all like, "This is an iconic moment." It's like this no. is like this is the future. Like this is the future. It's like no, it's like just a shit show. It's like no, it's really bad traffic at two a.m. in downtown New York. And Calm speaking down. of a shit show, Kanye West's uh, latest album, <laughs> "The Life of Pablo," is a complete shit show. So I decided to listen to this album randomly. I was like, "Hey, you know I'm what? Sh- it's been. A, it's, I have. It has been. Hold on. What?" I'm Wait. really glad you brought this up because I have I have a comparison I want to make uh, okay. once you're done explaining it. So okay. go ahead. So I have decided I decided to re-listen to it because it's like okay it's been like a month it's been like two months or so and I went back to some albums like I went back to Paying with recently and I liked that a bit more so maybe I'll like Life of Pablo a bit more. Um, so my theory that I nope. so my theory that I that the more I listen to it the more I dislike it that is somewhat untrue. However, I am only like I only like it like slightly more. Like, ever so slightly more. Like, it's like going from, like, a decent six to a strong six, essentially, is what I went through on this album. Wow, because you were being really harsh on it. I feel like it would have dropped to, like, a five for you. Uh, no. I, I, there's too many good, there's too many good, mo- like, great moments on the album for me to go, like, that far to give it a five. Because, like, a five means average, all right? I can't, like, say yeah. this album is average. It's like, you it's, can't it, call it, that weak and feature it's, average. It's like it's like a six out of ten, but like a what? But not like usually like whenever someone rates something around like a six out of ten, it's like it's a, it's like it's slightly above average. But I can't like I can't say that for like a Pablo. Like I can't. One like, of the it, things. It, it's, one it, of the it, things that makes. Oh, you want? I'll let you go. One of the things that makes Life of Pablo like so good in my mind is that like most of the features are probably in the top five like versus that a lot of those artists have been featured like chris brown chance rihanna the weekend i feel like those are all like top tier performances from those artists okay. and like i mean designer was basically ma- his career was made from this album that's that is true okay i he will say i'll say no on rihanna i still hate rihanna on famous however i like i, I remember whenever we did the discussion on it, i said that famous was my least favorite track i do not i disagree with myself i like famous a lot more. besides the rihanna hook it's pretty good and besides the taylor swift line once you get past the Taylor Swift line and Rihanna I'll, on the I'll hook, I still love Taylor Swift line. I oh God, yeah, I, I like. Famous. I, I'm, I'm no, conflicted like, on it. it. Was st- the stupidest shit. Like it was a stupid thing for him to say. Totally what? uncalled for. But I just love that he said. It's like like we were watching the live stream. It's like oh boy, he oh, done boy, did he it. Oh boy, he done did it. All like, right, that's, that's thing actually gonna like, just, like that's what I love about this album. It's like the entire album is just a uh, one big boy. Oh, he, boy, he did, did it. it. Yeah. It's like okay. every single song. It's like, boy, did he do that again? That is true. Did he do that? But you guys are—that's a positive boy. Mine's more of a negative boy. Like, okay, boy, really? Okay, because the problem Mine's is that, like, Kanye, that these lines it. are bad. These some of these lines them are just like terrible. But they wouldn't be as terrible if the delivery was not as bad. Like Kanye. I just love that he said it. I love that he said all these and things. I, I, and I, I, I want to love that he said it, but the way he delivered it was like, oh god, this is just no man, Kanye, no. I don't know how to fix the delivery, but it just, I, it's not right the way it is right now. And like, that's okay. Do you want to hear my conspiracy he theory? On, okay. I want to hear your theory. Oh, okay, yeah, actually, you know, what? I want to hear this. I'll shut up. I want to hear this. Okay, what I realized over the weekend, I was, uh, I was like on a train and it was like an hour long. So I had to revisit an album I hadn't listened to in a while. And so I decided to put this album on. And what I realized is that the life of Pablo has a lot in common with reflector. 
they're both like larger. They're both uh, albums from larger than life artists in their respective scenes. And the word I would use to describe both of them is a mess. But you can tell that the artists are having fun and doing what they want to on them. So I feel like I enjoy them at face value for that. Because I mean, Reflector is like overlong, jumps around in genres all the play, all all over the place. And that sounds a lot like Life of Pablo to me. And I realize that uh, Reflector is basically indie rock's Life of Pablo. Discuss. I'm listening. I fucking so I, 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 fuck, I, fuck, I fuck Reflector personally. Fuck my fucking hate. I mean, I mean, by that I mean it's five out of ten. <laughs> fuck you. Fuck you both. I Those are both nine out so. of ten albums in my opinion. Uh, Maddie, you didn't listen to Neon Bible for the first time like till a month ago. Yeah, I I, I still need to go back and re- just listen to all of it because like I yes, TVH. You still never listen to fucking Loveless. That is true. <laughs> However, like, I'm the only one here. Who, I'm the only here who can record right right now. I'm the only I'm the only person who can record the podcast, and I'm also the person who can organize everything better than anyone else. So Who's shut your face, we, Will. The reason we I'm just the mysteriously host, lose something. The reason something. I'm the host yeah. is because I'm the one who because I'm the one who had the idea to start the podcast. I'm the one who was able to execute it and continue to keep doing it for a year and a half now. <laughs> so shut your fucking mouth, Will. Oh, Will. Will's okay, going, Maddie. Okay, Will's going on cam giving me the boy hand. Fuck off, Will. <laughs> okay. Anyways, next time I want to talk about. Uh, I'm not going to say too much about the sound. I'm just going to say, hey, go listen to it. I think AJ, you can you can back me up on this one. Oh, yeah, it's my favorite album of last week, which is like not a big thing to say, but like it's really really good. Yeah, Zena Rubinos, uh, Zena Rub- Rubinos. Okay, I gotta make sure I'm pronouncing it correctly. Uh, Black Terry Cat. Uh, this is a very fantastic album. Uh, I found out about Zena Rubinos because of uh, Discover Weekly, uh, the Discover Weekly Spotify playlist. Uh, they put Harris Seating on there, and I fucking love that song. And I said it was in the album. And I'm like, wow, this album is awesome. And she came out with a new album last week. It's very good. If you, it's sort of, um, it's very inspired by Tupac Butterfly, but a lot. Yeah, more- it's really political. But a lot more playful than Tupac Butterfly because Tupac Butterfly was a bit more serious and not as playful. But it, it was—I mean, it was still my album year last year. There were songs in there that were playful, but this is a lot more. You know, it's still, yeah, it's still very political, but it's also. They're has... saying this is your album of the year. No, it's not my album of the year. My album of the year is still. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Boy, my album of the year is still James Blake. Okay, That's nothing's going to top that. Boy. I, 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 legit, what, I legitimately think nothing's going to top with that. Bad man. taste and bad opinions. Whoo! <sighs> well. The boy hands are coming out tonight. Yeah, this is just gonna. Okay, I don't want to fight. <laughs> Black Terra Cat, Zena Rubio's. Uh, a lot of fun tracks in here. I think my favorite track in here is uh, Mexican Chef. I w- Mexican Chef's a banger. I was bouncing like I was a. Uh, I was my, bouncing. I, I, I was jamming. I was on my way home from work. I was bouncing in my car at the stoplight to the song. It was fucking lit. Uh, but yeah, definitely listen to some. It's pretty short, and yeah, definitely worth a listen. It's, it's getting slept on really hard right now, and definitely worth checking out. I think like it's not getting slept on because she's a really low key artist. Like. Uh, I mean, there, there should be more people talking about it. Is what I'm trying to say. There should be more people talking about it. Yeah, it's, definitely. It's, it's definitely getting like it's definitely getting a little un, under, maybe not underrated. That's not the correct word. Well, we'll it's see, just like we'll see when the critic we'll see what the critics have to say when it comes under ex, underexposed yes. underexposed. Yes. So yeah, but cool. definitely worth checking out this album. It, it's pretty short, and yeah, I think I, I recommend it to like some one of my friends on Symbol, uh, Yazzy. Um, and she said she didn't. Really, she was like, oh, I I, I kind of like it, but you know. Uh, she said it was based on sort of like a not as good version of Esper- Esperanza Spaulding's album, which I guess you need to check that out. Have you listened to that album, AJ? No. Okay. I have listened to it. Is it good? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I was, I was actually trying to listen to it today in the car. Like I, uh, If you guys don't know, I got a job recently, and I had orientation I had to go to. And I was trying to listen to uh, Esperanza's album, and I was like, I need okay. I'm not. In the, I'm not. I'm not ready for this right now. Let me like put on something a bit more fun. Like I'll come back to this a different time. So I just put on Black Terry Cat and I was jamming in my car. Uh, so I put on Swans. Uh, sure. No. no. <laughs> they're sending no. it. They're sending it out this week. Oh yeah, that's I mean, that's gonna be that's gonna be. God, we're, we're actually we're actually pretty sad in like music discussions for the next like couple podcasts because avalanches. That's for sure. Swans. Well, that's that's like for sure. Now. Yeah, hey, that's true. A month. And, it's like a month. We'll probably discuss it then. Uh, but yeah, um, that's all I have to say. Uh, AJ? I mean, Swans what? is next week. That's exciting. Uh, is it next week? two weeks, but... It's uh, technically two weeks, but they're sending it out. Technically two weeks. Yeah. At the they'll, end of this pro- week. They'll probably so like an NPR stream out by like next week. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, yeah. I'll have my vinyl by next week. Yeah. I'll have my vinyl by next week. It's probably going to be signed by... I'm a- an executive producer, okay? <laughs> so... I'll just move on. Oh, yeah, your name's going to uh, be on the record. Well, that's exciting. On the album of the year. Yeah. All right. So, oh, that's right. Because you bought the little CD, the live one. Yeah, and uh, yeah. 
Nice. Is it okay? Do, I know we never really talked about it on the podcast. Uh, shit, should we? Hold on. I'm gonna, no, we're not going to talk about. Nope. It? You know what? I'm t- okay. Nope. All right, AJ, what you listen to yep. this week? Um, I I didn't really have any. I don't really have any albums on here because like I've just been jumping around listening to a lot lately. So I just want to go over a couple shows I have seen or am seeing uh, recently. So the Hotel Year two weeks ago, no, a week and a half ago. They're great. They're fucking fantastic. We're going to talk about the album later. So I won't say too much. Wait, uh, you definitely saw, you saw a celebrity them. there, didn't you? So I mean, like, like a very low, probably like E-list indie rock celebrity. Uh, yeah, Stephen. Me and Stephen Hyden are buds now. I went to his book signing uh, two days before I went to this concert. His book's great, by the way. You should definitely read his book. That's yeah, what I, I read recommend. that book last week, and it is fantastic. Fantastic book, yeah. And like he signed my book, we hung out, we talked, and I was like, "Are you going to see the Hotel Year on Thursday?" And he was like, "Fuck yeah, their album's really good." And I was like, "Cool, that's awesome." And then like we just kind of hung out and broed it down there. So that was cool. Stephen Hyden's a real one. Uh, shout out. Um, the Hotel Year were fucking fantastic. I'm going to make everyone sit through them at Pitchfork because they're so good. Um, they're really awkward. Christian Holden wore a pink shirt and had them tucked into like super 70s washed out faded dad jeans. It was just very awkward. He was wearing like Skechers shoes and he's got this really long greasy hair and he looks like a complete goon. And he's much younger than I thought he was. I didn't realize he was that young. But yeah, the Hotel Year are so fucking old. great. He looks so much older. Yeah. He's like a year older than Will Toledo. Mm-hmm. But um, and then last Friday I saw Pup who I was going on about their album on the last uh, podcast. Crazy fucking show. I, like, stood by the side because I stood by the side of the stage because, like, earlier this year I got my glasses punched off my face and broken at Ty Seagal, and I was like, okay, I'm going to take a break from, like, being up in the front, like, near mosh pits at any upcoming concerts. And Pup was definitely high energy, and I'm glad I stood by the side because, like, people were just getting beat the fuck up, and, like, they would stop during songs and be like, are you guys okay? Like, seriously, are you guys all right? But really high energy. You should definitely check them out. And uh, the two bands that opened for them were really good, too. Um, they played like a – I guess their al- their album uh, came out – their first album came out in 2014. And they played mostly stuff off of that, actually. They just played a couple songs off of the new one. Maybe that will change later in the tour. But I was a little let down by that. I like both of their albums, but I definitely like the second one a lot more. But, I mean, they open with If This Tour Doesn't Kill You, I Will. So, come on. You have to do that. Uh, pop really really good and then i've been listening to a shit ton of the cure because i'm seeing the cure tomorrow i bought tickets at the last minute um i've heard this tour is absolutely ridiculous they play for like almost four hours and they play like almost 100 songs at every show and it's just like jesus christ you guys but i mean they're prolific they're classics i'm really super excited to see the cure uh i saw bruce springsteen earlier this year and that was another like almost four hour show and just like very very excited for this show i think it's going to be one hell of a concert Oh, yeah, that's I think William. Steph, oh, oh, I was gonna say stuff. I think Stefan saw the Cure, and he was like, a, yeah, he, he, been playing he, like, tons he, of deep cuts. He's definitely the biggest Cure fan here. So yeah, I'm, I'm like ha- a. I was happy for I'm, him. I'm a very surface level Cure fan, but I mean, I'm super excited to see them anyway. So. Right on. Will, what are you All missing, right. my man? I'm gonna give a similar concert update. So I didn't listen to a whole lot this week last week because I was on a cruise. Woo. And it crashed or something. <laughs> Yeah, I hit it. Hit the dock when we were trying to land. Hit the dock, hit, boy! They did it. Yeah, the boy, they did it. It's, they knocked it down. It's, it's some crazy shit. But that's another podcast. Maybe a late. That's night. a late night. That is definitely a late we're night. We only have like thirty three minutes. All right, you can talk about it right now. No, we should we should have a like a, we should have a shit luck late night because I can talk about my experience breaking into my own car with crackheads. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, sure, why not? That okay, is well, you point. continue. Uh, anyways, but, but we we um we left for the tour tour for the cruise in vancouver and titus andronicus was there that night so i want to give them uh i want to go give them a view a listen oh shit my... yeah it was pretty i mean it was like kind of like a, kind of like a shitty punk club like it wasn't as nice a venue as i saw them at last year but that kind of added to the punk rock feel of it and this this is probably fucking crazy like a lot crazier than my crowd i saw them at in texas because well, like they're pr- they're like over a year out this wasn't the um, uh, most this lamentable is, tragedy tour, still was it? This was just kind of a one-off. Still, still technically, but they've like been it's like seventeen date tour, and that was the last date. Yeah. So what they play? Mostly Pretty much the same things they played last time I saw them. Okay. Okay. They play. I mean, they, yeah, they played a lot of most lamentable tragedy. They played a little bit of local business and some monitor. They closed off the show with Battle of Hampton Roads. Then. Oh you know, man, that's awesome. And, yeah, that was pretty. But the thing, yeah, what what discouraged me though is that um, since the last tour, they've almost completely turned over. The, I know the drummer and lead guitarist were definitely different. Well, that's kind of weird. Yeah, and also they had a, they had a multi instrumentalist 
last time I saw them, and he was not there this time. And I can't remember what the bases looked like, so I can't confirm or deny whether or not he was the same. But otherwise, it was basically a completely different band. So that was kind of to I just want to throw out there that, like, um, I saw The World is a Beautiful Place in April, and I was, like, super jazzed about that. And then I moved down here to Minneapolis, and they've played, like, three shows. In the two weeks I've been here, they've played three shows in Michigan. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, you guys. <laughs> I'm really fucking pissed off about that. Rip. But anyways, otherwise, it was a good show. And, like, when I was on the cruise, I mostly just listened to Joanna Newsom because I didn't have... She's the goat. Because she's the goat because I don't have internet and stuff there. So I just listened to what I had, and that's what I had. But I did download the monitor before I left because hearing TA made me in the mood. And that's an album I'm kind of weird about because <clears throat> actually my favorite is The Most Lamentable Tragedy, which is, I guess, a hot take around these parts. Or yeah, it's, parts. A bit of a, it's a bit of a hot take. I mean, yeah. people say the monitor is sort of, not to get into this argument again, but the it's monitor the is their one. classic. Yeah, it's the one. It's the, it's the one. But yeah, I mean, it's a sort of it's like a it's like a funeral neon Bible situation where it's like that's the one, but they also have this other one that's, that's arguably good. just as good. Yeah, maybe, maybe. The argu- the conversation can be had. Yeah, I feel like. The thing is, well, first off, for, first and foremost, the most brilliant part about this album are those fucking riffs. Yeah. Like how, the way they're able to make those colonial melodies and just those monster fucking riffs. I mean, it's a lot like the it's, it's, not, it's a lot like it's a lot like the new Pup album where there's like really good just like chanting and like anthemic choruses, which is fucking tight. K- kind of, but w- way more on this. Oh, I mean, Titus Andronicus are like the masters of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Japan droids, but. Well, we don't want to talk about the Japan droids. My feelings are hurt. Yeah, I was in Vancouver. I was like looking for them at the show. <laughs> you guys like, want to make an album? You guys want to throw an album out there? It's like it's yeah. like it's like hey, it's like you enjoying the show. You want to? Go back to the studio. <laughs> anyways, yeah, no. My problem with the monitor has always been that some of those tracks in the middle just kind of bog the album down. They're like two no, almost nine minute tracks in a row there. Just yeah. kind of kill it. In the past, they've killed it for me. But this this week, I grew an appreciation for a pot in which to piss in four score and seven. Oh, pot a pot in which to piss is one of my favorites. Yeah, it's a great. I mean, those first four tracks are unfuckable. With like a more perfect yeah. union is a top five rock track of the decade. It's fucking yeah. I mean, it's. I mean, so, like that, that. I mean, that riff. It's just, I mean, it, it like stands on its own too. Like maybe we people, were born to run. Do do do. Yeah, for people who wouldn't l- normally like the album, like that kind of music, I'm like, you still have to listen to this song. Yeah, the yeah. song in itself is like a fucking achievement. Yeah, like, like if, you, if I had to choose the top five moments in rock this decade, maybe two it's of them. Like, come it's like a rock. It, there's a lot of like sweets on that album. Like it's you so, know the songs. So like weird. I, I go back to songs on that album more than I go back to like that album itself. Yeah, de- def- definitely a songs album for me. Yeah. But then but also then, conceptual. Yeah. But then, yeah, it's like. The, it's a cl- battle. It, uh, the Battle of Hampton album. Roads. Yep. That shit, that's f- fucked me up. And then some. Yeah, I mean, I missed Titus Andronicus twice last year, so I'm really bummed about that. And uh, same thing happened with Swans, and now it looks mm-hmm. like I might never get to see Swans in this iteration. So add uh, Titus Andronicus to that list. I mean, you could yeah. see Swans and Pitchfork. They're going to be there at the same time, though. It's just there's a. I think of... we should go. Did you see that thread today on the sub? Uh, what thread? Someone was like, they got a list going of all the shows that are like in town that weekend, and they're like, oh, if anyone wants to like is going to Pitchfork and wants to go to these shows afterwards and like meet up or whatever, and like I dropped a comment in there about the Swans show, and I uh, said like see, a bunch yeah, of podcasts yeah, people I'd, trying I'd, to go. Yeah, I looked it up. The problem was that it's 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 21 plus, which is like, uh, oh, it is. Yeah, that's why that's why I looked it up on the on the venues website that's what it said i'm like god i want to oh, see i need to see swans okay i need maybe i'll just go alone <laughs> hell you could probably sneak me in maybe maybe and, and, and if yeah. the police are listening to this podcast uh this is a satirical podcast uh all <laughs> comments and uh all comments here are jokes they're not he actually meant, yeah, real he statements meant, they are not our actual he meant, opinions he meant, he meant virtually sneak him in is that I'll just stand in the front row and FaceTime uh, with Michael Gira. Like, well, well at Toledo is an upstanding citizen of the law and should be arrested. Or no, so, oh, yeah, the so Carsey, cool there's, yes. an after show, there's a Carsey Harris after show that's also 21 plus. And I'm like, God damn it. Why? I also kind of want to watch that. And then Carsey Headrest is playing Minneapolis on Monday. So I kind of want to see Carsey Headrest like three times in three days because that would just be fun. I think, Dude, he, I think he's coming to St. Louis. On, on this next tour, though, he's coming to St. Louis, though. So I'm happy about that. But not until September, which is like. 
Uh, well, Toledo well, isn't coming. The car seat headrest band is not coming to Texas. Rip. That's they a... played fucking like twelve shows at South by Southwest. Oh yeah. So, they, and, like, they, we're done so this, that done that, that doesn't state. count. Yeah. <laughs> Like fuck, fuck, fuck car seat headrests. They should be arrested under. Well, Toledo is an upstanding citizen. He is not an upstanding circumstance citizen. They should be arrested under every every circumstance. I just want to throw out there that Maddie's going to see LCD sound system, and I fucking hate it. Okay, I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure yet. Well, you have the opportunity. I have the opportunity. I could. I'm going to try to see privilege. I'm going to try to see. You have the privilege because they're coming to. I have no such privilege. Because yeah. I'm, I'm gonna think about seeing them. Because there's, but like Glufest, the lineup sucks except for like three or four artists. So that's not true. I mean, like what are the what are the other Chris Stapleton? He's a good headliner. Uh, let's see. Maddie does not. Vince Staples was on the lineup, I think. Uh, hold on. I'm gonna go to the Glufest website real quick. I I, I forgot. Lauren was it Lauren Hill was the other headliner? Oh yeah, Lauren Hill's a headliner, I think. Yeah, fuck, fuck oh, you, Maddie. For else, but like, for is she gonna, get, but is she gonna show Hill. up? Is she even gonna show up? <laughs> Okay, she's probably some, some like weird. Um, oh yeah, Anderson Pox gonna be there. Vince Staples. Oh, definitely go, dude. You gotta uh, go. Charles Bradley, Frightened Rabbit, Foxing. Fuck Foxing. They're boring as hell. Twin Peaks. Are, they're uh, good performers. Twin Peaks are gonna they're be a pitchfork. So Twin Peaks are gonna be a pitchfork. So if they're good, I may I may come and see them again. Uh, but yeah, mostly a uh, Diarrhea Planet, Mothers, uh, other acts. I don't really that's give a shit about. Good. But if I go there, it's mostly CLC Sound System. Like that's gonna be the main. True reason. that shit. Okay, but anyways, we probably should get to our main topic, uh, AJ. We probably should. You, um, you want to say something? This week, we are finally discussing the third proper studio album by, I don't know how to pronounce it, Worcester, Massachusetts? W- w- Worcester. I have a friend from Worcester. That's why I know. Worcester. My bad. From Worcester. the Hotelier. And uh, this album falls into multiple genres, including indie rock, emo, post-punk, all sorts of good stuff. Pop- and the album... Pop punk. The album is by the name of Goodness, and I think, aside from M83's Junk, it's the most aptly named album of the year. What do you guys think about this new album by the Hotel Year? Uh, well, you can go first. You want me to go first? Yes, I'm gonna go first. <laughs> I want to save my comments for last. Last? Yeah, cause you have, cause you have Boy, I'm, host, I'm hosting this podcast. Well, I mean, no, hey. okay, so it's interesting because in my last podcast I was on we t- discussed car seat headrest. Which was also, which, and I'll just say that the, these are my two favorite indie rock albums of the year. Of I, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna hop in and say, I mean, well, okay, Psycho Pomp's on another level entirely, but it's that's the goat. That's the fucking goat. But uh, the Hotel Year and Car Seat Headrest are the two albums where I was like, yeah, these are probably gonna be like two of my favorite albums of the year. Oh. And wouldn't you fucking know it? They both delivered. These are both fantastic. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. But, but. Uh, but no, 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 Maddie. Matt, we I was gonna, I was gonna go off topic. I was gonna talk about this album. I was gonna, I was gonna, I was gonna say like because you mentioned Psycho Pop because you like. I was playing, oh yeah, this okay. is a good story. Okay, I was playing Overwatch with Jeremiah and AJ. We were playing with some like people that I that I met on Xbox Live. There's one kid in there that was like stereotypical Xbox Live member. Anyways, so Jeremiah starts listening to Psycho Pop. And then AJ's like, no, 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 wait, wait, again, no, no, no. He, I got, he started, I, he started I, humming, or no, he was like, he was like, hey, AJ, guess what? And then I heard, like, the opening riff to In Heaven, and I was like, Jeremiah, wait, 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 pause it. Like, let's, I want to listen to. And, and so, we, and we so fucking... these fucking nerds, these fucking nerds, AJ, Jeremiah, they sync up Psychopomp so they can listen to it together while they're playing Overwatch. And they're going on about <laughs> this album that, like, almost, that, that no one in the chat, like, no one in the Xbox Live party knows about. So they sound like two crazy men. And I, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't, I've only listened to the album like once, so I don't understand what the hell they're talking about either. And it's like, what the f- guys? Who's men are doing? Who's ma- who's man's is this? Okay, anyways, back to goodness. You guys can continue. Oh well, yeah. Okay, so anyways, yeah, teens of denial and goodness. They also came out a week apart from each other, but they're almost the exact opposite. Like every cr- criticism I had of teens of denial, that's a praise I have. That's something that was a positive for goodness. Yeah, that's a, that's an interesting perspective. And everything, everything I dis liked about teens and if i did was i mean every, yeah everything i no was it no, everything i like about, about teens Good- Nile, i dislike about goodness i think what i'll say on that regard is that for me i have less com- i almost have no complaints about goodness i feel like it's a very very well-made compact um consistent just like here it fucking is album i think that's my favorite thing about it is that like everything about it feels necessary and feels like okay this is it we're not wasting any time like there are those weird interlude tracks and i feel like they just work so well but then the thing is uh teens of denial is much messier longer drawn out but i feel like the highs on teens of denial are a lot higher they're better than music this year yeah like i mean like 
soft animals close, but nothing gets on the level of like drunk drivers, killer whales, on goodness. Um, I think soft animals close, but yeah, I mean, uh, Teens of Denial I think has better moments and better highs, which is a good way to describe it. But like for a consistent experience, goodness is one right. of like the most goodness is one of the most like well made compact rock albums and that's another thing too is it really 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 transcends emo and i feel like if it was marketed more just like here's a really good indie rock album a lot more people would be open to it but people just like hear the word emo and are like oh fuck no i'm not listening to that piece of shit album and like well, this album also this album the cover art really 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 also the cover art but this album really 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 does not sound that emo in my opinion to me there's two parts first of all the vocals are still pretty emo I and then settle the scar. That, yeah, that, okay. that I, I will say that before I make any more general comments down, that's probably my favorite track on the album. Mostly just for that like distortion during like the drums or no, whatever. The, the, the drums, dude, the fucking yeah. drums. Um, oh, we oh need to talk. God. We need to we need to take a moment of silence. I feel like and just talk about. Well, not, not we need to, we need to set aside a moment and talk about how good the drumming is on this album because I'm going to disagree with you on that one. Like. That's that's where I disagree with you on there. That's well, the, like, say, can, I, can I just say my comments on the album, or just get it out of the way? Go. Yeah, just, do it, and then okay. we'll meet Adrian. All right, so I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna you can my, slink back I'm, off to your. I'm just gonna get my. Hot, I'm just gonna get my hot takes out of the way right now because I'm sick, and I'm gonna let. Oh, these I got a hot take. I'm, 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 gonna, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let these two back. guys struggle drink over this album. So this album is like 47 minutes long, except it's for it's only 47 minutes long, but yet it still feels like 15 minutes too long. That's one. That's hot take number one. Hot take number two. Um... It's so weird that that a band can sound so simultaneously passionate but uninspired at the same time. Hot take number three. Um, this sound is three. Three. Yes. This album is very pretentious. To don't me. say. Don't. Nope. Okay. Pretentious? We need to go. No. We need to go. No. 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 See, no. That he's <laughs> right about. He's right about. He's okay. Right here's about. the thing. Okay. It, right from the beginning. Right it, it has this this stupid ass spoken no. word piece at the beginning of the album that is like it's, it's dumb. It's dumb and it doesn't work. Repeat your comment. Did you say this album is pretentious or this album sounds pretentious? Can it because there's both? a distinction. Well, what, what's the distinction? I, I want to know. Can, give me the distinction so I can make the official call. If you say the album sounds pretentious, I agree with you. If you say the album is pretentious, I disagree with you. Because by definition, pretentious is like, you know, the album is pretending to be something that it's not. Parts of this album are disingenuous. Nothing on this album is disingenuous. Christian Holden really thinks that opening his album with like a spoken word poetry piece is going to affect people and be like, oh, this is what I want to put out there. He's very, very, he genuinely means that. It sounds pretentious, which I, will, I 100 I will say that. I will say it sounds pretentious. But for it you, sounds But for you guys, that works. But for me, it doesn't work. And but the thing is though, and I, and I like very pretentious albums that like have done stuff that's kind of similar that has like random skits and whatnot. I mean, hell, you like Dean Blunt? Dean Blunt. Let me get my let me get my Dean Blunt show the way. Redeemer. The Redeemer is an album that has like that is pretentious. Ring, ring, ring. The Redeemer is it sounds pretentious as fuck, but somehow it works. Okay, it fucking works because Dean Blunt. He's an artist. Okay, he's a fucking artist, and he knows Here's how to bring thing. all that stuff in together. For me though, Hoselier does not be able to bring the stuff in together because they don't they don't quite have the nuance that Dean Blunt has on that album. They have all, all the album is really besides for the cover art and the spoken word, it's all nuance. Mm, I disagree. Watching this is a very, watch, this is a very watch, subtle album. To me, watching these songs the perform live and like seeing Christian Holden like riff on it and be like, oh, here's like a goofy song, and then playing a song that like on the album sounds really take me serious you know my lyrics are important. like the lyrics are very very poetic on these i love the lyrics it's on almost i yeah. love them too but like i don't put much like i haven't like just tried to decipher them because like i just won't like, 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 those are sort of the type of lyrics i don't read anything into per se yeah they're not really that. like the lyrics they're, they're a lot about like oh let's appreciate like nature and life which is a far cry from home like no place is there because that album was just very much like all of the people in my life are very very shitty and i've done a lot of horrible things and like i'm in very uncomfortable situations with a lot of the people i care about most in my life and it's just like everything is fucked and this album is like hey everything's not fucked there are things that are like really really cool in life and that's what i really like about this album I like as the sun. Fan, yes as a huge fan of uh home like no place is there goodness like feels like a, a spiritual successor i mean it's by the same band obviously but like it feels like thematically progressed from home like no places there and a lot of bands especially emo bands are just like like they could have very easily cranked out another home like no places there and just been like here are uh, songs about like alcoholism and domestic abuse and like lots of things that are shitty they're like no here's a positive album about things that are good 
goodness. And uh, like it, it, it marks a huge shift in Christian Holden's songwriting and their lyrics. And like, I think it instrumentally sounds different from home. Like no places there. It's big, that's it the like, biggest difference. It doesn't sound like a different band, but the performances are cleaner and a lot like less punk. E it's very, very indie rock inspired. I mean, like if this album came out 10 years ago, it would have been an indie rock album, not an emo indie rock album. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, I'm not going to ask you. I was going to say, uh, like, because y'all been hyping it up in the chat, and I'm like, okay, maybe they'll be, maybe they'll finally be an emo revival album that I like. And there actually was, but it wasn't this album. I like, okay, here's thing. I will say, Marm Bass was last album, Holy Ghost. I liked it, but I have no plans to return to it, like, anytime soon. Let's do it a couple times. I enjoyed it. That's all I need. That's all I wanted. Just, I don't need to listen to us anymore. Like, I enjoyed it for what it was. Cool. Wedding Singers is a top five song of the year. Wedding Singers Wedding is, a very Singer is really fucking good. It's a very good song. But this album, just, oh, God. Okay, can we talk about this dumb thing? Because I, would you guys agree with me or are you going to disagree with me? There's this stupid fucking thing throughout the entire album and, like, random songs where the snare drum, he keeps going with it. It's like, dun, dun. Oh, see, I love dun. that. I love it. I don't like that. It's the that, mess. It just doesn't, like, I just don't. Why? Can, can you guys explain? Well, he only has, can you guys explain twice. why? Can you guys explain it why? It happens on this part two and it happens on End of Real, which is the first song and the last song. Okay. Why, though? It's, 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 why, it's, it's though? Thematic. It's thematic. It's some... It's some why it's is it thematic? It's wrapping up the story. I really like the drumming on this album. Like, that's my favorite part of the... Aside from the lyrics, I think. The lyrics and the drumming, for me, are, like, the two things I would pick as just, like, holy shit. That's what makes this album super, super special. Because the drumming is so upfront on all of the tracks. It's just, mixed like, so loudly. Mixed so loudly and stands, like, so front forward. And, like, they've got two guitars. They have two guitars. And the drums stick out so well, especially in their live performances. It's uh, I really appreciate what they did with that on this album because it gives it a distinct sound. Like even listening to the album, it sounds like it's being performed. You know what I mean? A lot of a lot of rock. These this is one of my biggest problems with a lot of rock albums these days is the albums are so fucking clean and all of the performances are so fucking neutered and produced. And it's like here's this riff. We do it once. We'll just loop it. Whatever. Don't worry about it. And it's like actually play the fucking music and on, on goodness i can tell that like the songs are progressing and it feels like you know the recording process was very very well thought out for goodness because these songs like sound energetic and lively on the album that, that's the thing so i want to talk about it's like well first of all maddie did you read the maddie's so unhappy to hear <laughs> anyways did i did i do the what what did i do what did i not do you, you groaned yeah, I groaned. Yeah, you're, I did fucking you're groan. You're audibly groaning. Because I want to, because like, as I'm disagreeing so hard because I don't like the drumming on this album. I think the drums are mixed way too high, and it, I wouldn't mind it if the drums were actually good. But the drums just do not sound good on the sound to me. Like, I don't like the snare sound is terrible. Just they just don't. It, do, it doesn't. There's not good sounding drums. Okay, like the the snare is the most noticeably like bad part. It's like okay, God, the snare just uh they mix too they're high. They're not performed. But they're not and, performed. And then, and then, the, badly. And then the, they're not performed badly. It's just I don't like the sounds of it. You like the mixing? Yeah, yeah. I guess the mixing, and then I don't really, I don't really like the instrumentation that much. It's just that there's not that many like. Here's the thing, because it's funny. It's funny we're talking about Tisa now. Tisa now has so many like memorable guitar moments on that album. That's uh, fantastic. To me, this album had no like super memorable guitar moments. Just it was all like to me again. I know you guys are kind of like yeah, I don't hate this album because it's emo. I hate this album because it's bland indie rock. Like it just doesn't. It's like really bland indie rock that does nothing for me. Or that's really how I feel. No. Again, yeah, y'all can I mean, disagree. it's not like y'all can disagree, but that's, that's how I, mean, I feel. It's, it's kind of the thing is, it's subtle. Like, this is an album that doesn't reach out and grab you. You have to find it's very like clean find, and subdued, I think. It, like, I like when I heard piano play, that's my first thought was this is like a chill uh, Japan droids. Like, yeah, Japan I, mean, droids, I don't know, I don't know I, how you could. I don't know how you could call songs like Piano Player or uh, Soft Animal like boring or bland. I don't think like, they're all like, those are. I don't think it's all bland, but I think for the most part, listening to it as a whole, I just don't get anything out of this, and it just comes off as like kind of bland. See, that's why I made my earlier that's comment. Opposite. That's why I made my earlier comment that that it sounds it's simultaneously really passionate, but also uninspired at the same time, though. Because I, I guess it's maybe just because I'm indie rock. It's like it doesn't seem like they're reinventing the wheel in any way, which I don't. I shouldn't expect from from an album like this, and I really shouldn't. 
but it just it doesn't do anything like unique with indie rock or emo or any of the genres that it tries to go at. And that's why I just like the world. That's why I like the you know the world's a beautiful place album from last year is that it went in all these genres, but it did nothing with them that was like really enjoyable. It was just like oh let's just mix all this stuff because we can, not because we're good at it, but let's just do it because we can. Maddie, can you can you do- can you hang delete up, your account? <laughs> yeah, yeah, delete your account. <laughs> delete your account. See, okay, um, well, well, you you told me you we told won't me, get into that. But you told me in the in, I, in the group chat. You said, well, again, you said the best way to come to sound is hot, and that's what I'm doing. Will okay, that's what I'm doing. I'm, I mean, that's fine. I, yeah, I'm the same one here. I'm I'm the one here repping for the fuck the emo revival. Okay, I'm the same think, one on this podcast. Teens, Y'all are the crazy ones here. Okay, yeah, I think <laughs> Teens of Denial proved that the rock wheel cannot be reinvented in 2016. If any album was going to do it, I think we all can agree it was going to be Teens of Denial. And I think like. As much as we, as hot as we are on that album, in a good way, it really proved that, like, okay, you know, we were expecting something new, and like, we were expecting some kind okay. of reinvention, some kind of revelation with this I album. Was... And, it wasn't a reinvention, but it did something unique. Again, Will Toledo is a very unique. Again, he's a unique songwriter and he's a unique well, vocalist. Unique this unique album is. He's just this a really good songwriter. Very, very unique. Again, it's this album is way more unique than like Teens cool. Now. He's just very good at songwriting songs. Okay, sure. But I just again I, I prefer the way Will Toledo did it because again I just I prefer his style of songwriting because it, it there's like to me the energy on that album I prefer the energy on Teens of Denial. There's a real energy. There's real you know it doesn't bore me. Like it's constantly there's constantly like new stuff happening on Teens of Denial. On this album it just feels like there's I'll, nothing. I'll give it to you. This isn't there's an nothing new happening. Wait, that's, what? that's that's the, well I'll give you on goodness. It's not it's not super energetic. They pick the two best songs as singles again which has happened a lot this year but yeah piano player and soft animal are like the two in my opinion peak moments on the album and where it's just like holy shit this is high energy this fucking rocks and like i've heard them both for months so like i skip them a lot when i listen to this album through because i'm like i've heard the song probably a hundred times so i'll skip it but the other songs are i mean like I think every song on this album is like on the same level as the song that came before it, withstanding the interludes. But like, it just keeps up a consistency. The thing about this album is it's super, super consistent, in my opinion. Like, well, it just flows well, and it's just like, here it is. If you like it, you'll know by the first song, and you'll be, you know, bored. You'll be wishing it was over by the last song, but you know what you're getting, and you're getting it the whole time. Yeah, see, well, see, maybe, for, maybe that's one more thing I want to say. Because y'all find it consistently good, I find it consistently bland and boring. That's that's the difference we're kind of coming into. Is that we'll agree that's consistent, but but on the on, but if it's good, that's consistent is what we're disagreeing on. I think. I feel like I feel like anyone coming to this album should get through Piano Player, and if Piano Player doesn't hook you and you want to hear more, just go away because you're the album's not for you. You need to get through. The, the you need to get over the cover art you need to get through the poetry intro you need to get through goodness part two which has a killer fucking drop by the way that when the whole band comes in on goodness part two fucks uh, me up every absolutely time. yeah and Maddie, then... how's that drop not excite you how's that what how's that drop in goodness part two not excite you when the whole band comes in on goodness part two well I mean, because it, it starts with just the it starts with just the and drumming vocals. and like i mean it, when, it, when, it, would, it, would, it, would, it would excite me if i actually remembered it so Listen to it again. Boy, you're not like you're not. His vocals sound like they're really far away. You know, there's a there's a there's a kind and immediate hushing, do, and the drum, do, do, and then the whole fucking band comes in. Oh, it's no, a, no, it's no I love how it comes to like ben, like like when the charts sound. Yeah. Bana, bana, bana. Oh, I love... yeah. Okay, no, it's that... not as no, good. Then, as... No, then Matt, Maddie. Okay, then like you say you don't like the, those like drum taps at the end of the songs. Yeah, I don't like it. But what about that fucking transition from Goodness Part Two to Piano Player? Okay, yeah, you can't talk shit about that. Yeah, you can't. You can't say that wasn't fucking brilliant. I mean, here's the thing. Again, I came to this podcast. I will. I will admit that I came to this podcast mostly unprepared because we can't. We're kind of doing this last minute. But uh, I think yeah, I, I do. I'm here I, to jerk. I do. I'm here to jerk. I'm, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm here to break the circle jerk. But again, I, here's the thing. If enough people in the podcast like it, most likely it's going to be in our top 10. I'll probably have more refined thoughts on it by then. But right now, my initial reaction is that I don't really care for this. There's a couple songs in here that I don't mind as much. You know, I think Goodness War 2 is all right. Peanut Player, all right. Uh, Soft Animal, all right. Uh, Sell a Scar, all right. Everything else, eh. Right, you can drop it. I have a... I have a... Oh, I have a... I have a... Oh, hold on. AJ, hold up. Oh, you just, like, laughed like crazy there. I was I was speaking weird. Um. Continue. I have a gamble for you. All right, shoot. I think you would. I think you would like 
Home Like No Place Is There more than this album. Have you listened to that one? I have not. Maybe I should listen to it. Matt, we'll, we'll Matt, see. Matt uh, uh, here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the gamble that he won't because... It's about 10 minutes shorter, has more song variation. It does get kind of like screamo e at points. I feel like Maddie will hate Life, Life and Drag and like the last minute and a half of Among the Wildflowers. He'll, he'll like... hate Introduction to the Album. Oh, you cannot hate Introduction to the Album. Yes, he will because the vocals. The vocals that, are song, that song is impossible to hate. No, no. The thing is, he's not... I just don't think his vo- thing is his vocals on on that album are that much more wild. Yeah, I just don't think Maddie's gonna go for I that. I just feel like I'm taking I'm listening to all of his I'm taking all of his complaints you know to heart about this album the things he doesn't like about this album and I feel like all of them are the the things that make Home Like No Places they're different from this album and so like he's saying oh they all sound the same none of the songs have memorable you know moments that set them aside home like no places there is very much a moments album where it's just like holy shit that moment and then holy shit that moment and then holy shit that moment uh where this one is just like this is a very good 47 minute album from start to finish i fucking love it but i feel like home like no places there give it a shot maddie at least get through like the first couple songs how long is it 36 minutes oh that's not that long yeah Yeah, i can i can try to give it a listen and like That'll be my challenge for the next podcast. I will talk again if you're on the next podcast or if any if one of you two guys, I will talk about it. I feel like you'll the, hate the, it. The next time you'll hate parts of it. it. You'll hate parts of it more, but I feel like as an album, you might appreciate it more than goodness, just because it does the things you say goodness doesn't do for you. Okay, then I will hopefully check it out. Uh, on that note, let's get Maddie out of here so I can yeah, get some y'all can jerk. Go thought. ahead, go ahead and jerk. Let's jerk. Go. Well, things that like you, you read the the inter the big intensive interview with him, correct, AJ? Oh, that you had to scroll away all the way down to to get to the album stream. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I think what comes off the album is that Christian Holden is just a very intense person. Yep. Very like he has these extremist, uh, anarchy political views that low key trigger me. <laughs> but you still like. like him. Yeah, no, that's the whole thing. Is it's like he's just so intense and like he has. He's like vegetarian, like straight edge, you know, like he's like Taoist or Taoist, one of them. Yeah, I mean, the politics don't really (laughs) seep into this. This is a philosophical album more than it is a political album. You know what I mean? And like, you can't really. Go ahead. I don't think you can disagree with his philosophy at all because his philosophy is just kind of like, oh, we should appreciate like life and shit. We should take time to be happy and whatnot. Yada, yada, yada. Yeah, and that's the thing is 2016. Fuck being happy, bitch. Well, that's the point of this album is like it's 2016. It's time to be happy. It's time to stop being sad. That was like the whole point in that Home Like No Places. There was such a sad boy album. It was I mean, if Benji didn't come out, it would have been the essential sad boy album of 2014. But um, it was a very sad, dark, angry album. And this one is like, whoa, this is very like none of the songs are sad or like negative. They're all, in fact, very positive. (laughs) Right. But anyways, that's the, what, what I'm trying to drive, though, is that Christian Holden is a very intense person. He's very serious. Doesn't come off on this album. Like, like you said. I'm just kidding. Actually, it does sound very fresh. I, I, you know, I, I will, at least, if I had anything positive, it does sound like Christian Holden, he is really putting his all into those vocal performances, which is why right. I brought up the passionate comment, was that I think the vocals are very passionate, but the instrumentation is not quite, or at least it just isn't doing anything for me. It's like halfway well, there. Well, for for me, the thing about the album is that like things that like, he he's very uncompromising, like both in his political views, but also just in his artistic views. He's very uncompromising, prideful. Like um, like sounds like he's like like I said, this is probably the most cohesive, holistic album of the year I've heard. Mm-hmm. Most of these songs I don't enjoy listening to on their own. Like like I can put, put on two deliverances and think it sounds stupid or whatever. Like if I just put on that one song, <clears throat> but if I go from very start to very finish. It just it creates a very fr- frizzen. By the time you get to end of real, mm-hmm. it's a very intense, cathartic experience. Yeah, end of real by of, itself is like a weird closer, but in the yeah. context of the album, it works. Yeah, super well. the album, yeah, like it just like is a perfect climax of all the emotions from the album. Uh huh. And that, that's the thing about about it is like you can tell that like he wrote pretty much almost the top. I feel like he wrote the, every song on this album, like every note before they started to hit the studio. Yeah, I, just like the way it all goes together. He says they recorded no extra songs. Like someone asked in the AMA if he recorded any extra songs, they said nope. Like we recorded these thirteen tracks, which Plus, is like it, interesting. 
Yeah, like the end of goodness part one. So fourteen tracks. Yeah, which it's weird that that song's not on the album. I think. I th- what, yeah, it would be kind of cool if that was right before goodness part two. Yeah. But I don't know. Because anyway. I mean, it's kind of like a remake, but not really. Yeah, it is. It's the same song. It's just performed completely differently. Yeah. yeah. Which is what and, makes goodness and, part two. And, and y'all are trying to get trying to like say that I'm like somewhat wrong for the pretentious this comment when they don't when they okay they have part two in the oh, album no, part, but part one same on the album song. we're just gonna have part I, two I, I man told you, I told you the I told you the album like I told the yeah, album, I, know, I know why but I'm still gonna say that it's like a little pretentious that it they appears, did that it no, appears it is, pretentious it is yeah absolutely I agree Christian Holt like, like have you read that interview that I mean, it's pretty long but basically the point you derive from it is Christian Holt is a pretentious guy he's very serious I think that's what makes his art so good is that he comes from it with just such an uncompromising vision. Mm-hmm. That's he knows and, like, what he, he wants to make, and like he's making it. And, and like that's the thing with the cover art, like yeah, he knows what he's doing. And, and the thing is, like he's, he's an art anarchist. He's against like he doesn't want anyone to buy that. I mean, he does, but at the same time, he doesn't want anyone to buy the album. Uh. Uh, also, uh, part of it, but anyways, and also just a statement on how like unsexualized nudity because like we have so much. It's like sexualized imagery, so it's like, what if we just give you this completely unsexualized nudity? Take it. Enjoy what if it. What everyone's fucking right now? But what if everybody's fucking? <laughs> Hold on, did you guys see what I posted that... on the Indie Heads po- what I posted on the podcast Twitter? No. no. Y'all want to see? It? <clears throat> yeah, y'all can go look at that I real don't quick. Think... Do I want to? Uh, sure, you can. Uh, I guess while while you guys look at that, I think we're pretty yeah. much, I think we're pretty much close to done talking about this album. Well, I mean, we're not going to convince you. Yeah, you are. I mean, the I thing mean, is, I'm yeah. done. I'm not sure if you guys are, because I'll never be done. Because y'all not really talking about the songs anymore. You're just talking about the the album art and then Christian Holden himself. So right, I mean, but that's the thing. With, I mean, no, if, I if mean, you have anything I, more to I, say, I, I, if you have anything I more to say, feel free. Okay, I'm not the host this week. AJ is. He's the one in control. I, I feel like we're 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 wrapping up. We're getting there. It's very. Yeah. Uh, we right, said... let, let it happen though. It's like in the middle of something. Like you just keep on. I can't get a flow I don't like when people talk about something they like that I don't like, Will, okay? okay, oh, okay it's been ten minutes, hold on, it's been ten minutes since anyone said Dean Blunt. We need to take a quick... Uh... That's why I didn't come on the podcast. <laughs> William, wrap it up. Okay. Take All us right. home. So basically what I'm trying to say, though, is that he, with a holistic artistic vision, he just creates this one most holistic piece of art I've heard in this year. It's very resting in that way. And just... Things like, no, I had a thing, then Maddie fucked me up. God damn it. So, AJ, you want to... <laughs> um, you should check Goodness by the Hotel You're Out. It's a very, very strong rock album in a year uh, that has an atypical amount of strong rock albums. If you're turned off by the emo influences of the vocals and some of the performances, that's your problem. But the emo revival is here, and it's stronger than ever. And it's here to stay. Uh, thanks for listening. Yeah, too and we bad. love you. Yeah, too bad. No one really, nobody really cares about it though. Okay, I, I, want to, I want to. Uh, I, I want the, the, the only person who cares about that's any like if any knows like Ian Cohen. I was gonna say I want the only, final he's only, statement. He's only a contributor at Pitchfork right now. I want the I want the final statement on this podcast to be something Ian Cohen said. It's it's gonna be one of those food for thought statements is that Ian Cohen has declared this not an emo revival album but a rock revival album. And I feel like that's a very apt comment and you don't have to jump down the throats of the people who are saying that and uh, try and defend the rock music genre. Just think about it for a moment about what this album's doing differently from what we consider rock indie rock music these days. And just think about the, uh, the different directions this album's going. Cause there's a lot there to digest and uh, it's a very, very good album. Very great album. Good album. Good things. William. Good, good. It sings. William. Do you have I'll any give it an Ian. Sorry. My my head rating is an Ian Cohen. Yeah, let's... I'm gonna give it a solid Ian Cohen. Uh, let's see. Um, I did not like the album. Uh, maybe not dislike. I did. Okay, I didn't hate. Okay, I, I, I okay. I, I will be honest. I'll be. I'm gonna be more honest right now. I've been exaggerating a little bit, obviously, for for entertainment purposes. Let me be very honest, real quick. I don't hate this album, nor do I like it either. It's a very strong five. It's just it's not my it's not my type of music. It's just it's not me. 
I mean, there's you're kinder a, to it than you're kinder to it than Fantano's being, so I appreciate that. I just it's it's again the arrival is just, it's, it's actually... just it's not for me. Like I think the closest again the closest we've gotten is like modern baseball is the one I like because I because they're a bit more playful and a bit more fun. That's what I want more out of I guess the emo revival, and this isn't really that. It's like again very it's it's a lot more serious exactly. kind of it's a lot very serious sounds pretentious like eh, no not for me but yeah my head rating would be uh just be a completely neutral just I no it, it'd be the emoji the uh, mouth closed emoji with eyes or whatever I don't know I just I just I, it's it's the it, like flat lines flat lines emoji. Yeah, the flatlines emoji, or literally, uh, literally, my 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 head ring is a completely blank face, nothing on my face. I got I got no real like, eh. The dead not... inside, the dead inside emoji. Yeah, sure, go with that. Not for me. That's all I gotta say. Okay, well, thanks for listening. Uh, what's the next episode gonna be? What are we gonna talk about? Next episode, uh, we actually might just do top ten albums so far of twenty sixteen. It's June. Ooh, it's gonna be a good one. It's halfway. well, yeah, we're we'll to. We have a couple interviews we could do. Also, it's also it's like an excuse to actually put together a list because I have not done that so far this year, which is weird because usually I'm like on top of that, like doing that like right away, and I have not even like I think I have a top five already set up, but like below that, I have no idea. Like I, I have a super detailed. I have like a super detailed top like fifty for this year going. I'm being like more. I'm keeping up with it more than I had do in past years, so mm-hmm. that's good. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. Uh, we got our copyright strike removed on YouTube. We got that fucking removed. Hello, hello. So yeah, if you if you oh, I, I missed I missed that. See, I, I think I posted it like really quickly. Uh, but yeah, we have our YouTube channel back. Uh, I re-uploaded all the podcasts that we missed that were on on my personal channel. They're still gonna be up on my personal channel because why would I delete them? There's no point. But they're up on the main channel now. So if you want to watch those, go on ahead. If you you know didn't know that we were gone. Uh, we talked about it a bunch, like on every podcast, or like I mentioned, I mean videos. Uh, but yeah, we have a channel back. So uh, FYC, uh, I guess I want to. I want to make a quick comment on FYC. I really want to do. I really want to do an FYC. I just have no idea what album I want to do. And also, right now, my editing situation is pretty like it's different because I had to delete Final Cut off my computer because it was just like. It was causing too much problems. It was like really outdated. It was too slow. Like I just couldn't work on work with it anymore. So I had to delete it because it was taking up way too much space on my computer anyway. So uh, now I'm using iMovie, which I don't. iMovie is terrible for like editing videos like FYC. So um, if we do bring back FYC, most likely I will not be the one to bring it back. I'm gonna look into getting either you know Final Cut again, or I'm gonna look into getting uh, Premiere to hopefully like get something out because I have ideas of what I want to do. I just have to like really pick it out because I'm like I'm stuck between a couple albums right now. Uh so yeah, that's all. That's my update on FYC. We have our podcast channel back. Um yeah, that's about it. Cool beans. Cool beans. Uh so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. Uh thank you AJ for taking over as host. While hey. I was sick and my throat hurts and I probably it's hurt all my good. more. Surprisingly have not coughed that much during this podcast. It's only been like a couple months right up right to mute the mic and cough. Uh so yeah. Hopefully you guys, it's lit. It's lit. Hope you guys enjoy this week's, uh, this week's episode. Next week, we're gonna do our top. I guess top. Th- do we want to do top five well, or top three? I think we have we have a few we have a few episodes we can do before that. Let's see. Uh, uh, I want, want Swans first. Let's no. Well, Swan no Swans will hold up on. No, this. we should do Swans. Bef- we should do Swans we after. Should, yeah. Um, okay. So next week we'll oh. be doing our top albums of the year so far. Then we'll do Swans, and then something special, something we don't know yet after that, and then after that probably either Avalanches or I don't fucking know. We actually do have a lot. We have a lot going on. Uh, So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this week's episode, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.